Hey, it's me. Wow, why do the lights feel really bright today? Stop shining on me. So, story time. I paint, I paint things, I paint things every week. I'm not a perfect person. I make mistakes. When I've ruined something, but there's still just that little bit of life, if I could just Basically what I'm trying to say is sometimes I screw things up, but if there's any chance of fixing them, I save them. Ow! And I put them in this box. Hello failure, we meet again. There's actually not that much in here because most of the time I'm able to correct my mistakes. I can fix it enough where it, it's decent in the end or the failure is so catastrophic that there's nothing left of it. So these are kind of the in-between scenarios where things got messed up, but not enough where I just threw them away because they were no longer deserving of being on this earth anymore. And they're just in this bin waiting to be rescued. Most of this stuff is from my hydro dipping adventure. Wait, this isn't a failure. This is actually kind of pretty. You, you can, can live. live. But we also have a couple other things. I'm hoping that I can save these and redecorate them and turn them into something that I actually like, hopefully. Ooh, what if I have a double failure? <laughs> Let's get into that. So, here's the whole Motley group. Each one of them has something about them that just doesn't quite meet my standards. Basically, y'all ugly. The first one I'm gonna single out is this coaster. This was a failure from my hydro dipping video. It was a good dip. The problem is that text, which is so unattractively ghosting through the paint. They say, I wish I could text my dog. Yeah, still think that's the most random thing ever. Like, how, how is, is this, this relatable? relatable? <laughs> I tried to get away with dipping it without priming it first. I didn't. I did prime the other two. You'll have to watch that video if you want to see how those turned out. Gotcha! It does have some texture on it from the globs of spray paint. So first thing I'm gonna do is take some sandpaper and just scratch off as much of that paint as I can. And once I've chewed that up quite a bit, I'm gonna swap out the coarse sandpaper with some fine sandpaper and use that to smooth out the surface nicely, which created this nice green dust. Here he comes to save the day. It's my vacuum! Suck it up. And that all worked splendidly. The surface is nice and smooth now. Moving along, I'm getting out my gesso and my very crusty paintbrush. This is ridiculous. I literally have a brand new pack of paintbrushes just sitting. It's just so hard to let go. I'm applying that gesso now. It just gives a nice base coat and helps the paint to adhere better, supposedly. That's what they tell you. Is gesso actually just a scam? Possibly, but I have no proof of that. And I realize now that I forgot to sand the edges down. Still kind of got chunky edges. Awesome. Now I'm taking my white paint. I use so much white paint. I decided to just buy a huge jug. I have regrets about that because it's extremely hard to open. Uh, so I can look forward to that struggle every day. Maybe I'll get buff. Now painting it white, which is just so much different than the gesso. It's really, really different. Now I've got my solid white background. So fresh and clean. Time for the design. Since this is a coaster, I decided to go with kind of like a liquidy design. It's like the coaster already has the drink stain on it. Um, that sounds exciting. I'm using acrylic paint and just going in for the color. Since the old design was kind of rainbowy and the colors were just like all mushing together and I liked it, I decided to kind of keep that vibe. So I'm doing the liquid thing and rainbowy, mushy thing also. These little white splotches are supposed to be like the air Areas where the liquid is separating, you know, how it does that. This one looks like a really derpy face. <laughs> So blending, lots and lots of blending. The center area kind of became a, um, a little bit troubled. <laughs> There's a war going on here. I could have really saved myself some time and painted the colors in a line instead of doing like this radial kind of thing. I'm struggling to try to keep that center area from looking like straight up dung. This was the best I could do with that. And now I'm just bringing the drips over the edge to make sure that it looks nice and continuous. And now the fun part which is bringing in some darker shadows to really make that liquid pop and look more liquidy. This video is all about my failures, right? Well, if you've been here for a while, you may be familiar with my most notorious failure. She doesn't have a name, but nobody could forget that face. How does it feel being the face of failure? But one of the biggest problems with her was actually that the paint was already too thick, so adding more paint on top of that would have not helped. I kind of regret 
regret my decision to paint the background on this white because it makes the highlights seem a lot more dull. You don't get that same pop. I'm just, I'm not getting that real juicy look that I'm wanting. Speaking of juicy, I'm adding a nice clear coat and I did add four layers of that to really build up a nice protective coating. And here's the before and after. I actually kind of miss the design of the original. That hurts me. But the new coaster overall is definitely a lot better. It's cleaned up. There's no longer that text coming through. So I do really like this. I think it's really cool. My only problem is it just doesn't look liquidy enough to me. Here's how it looks in use with my rainbow mug. Now I need to paint a mug and match it up perfectly with the coaster. They could be like a set. <gasps> next time. Okay, moving on to the next project. I'm gonna select this little pouch. It's just a standard little pouch. What's inside? Nothing. Nothing at all. Hi, Twinkle Toes. It's four poorly drawn strawberries that are just smudgy beyond belief. I'm not really sure that I tried all that hard on this one. I don't have the patience for this right now. I was testing out fabric markers. I think I discovered I'm not really all that into fabric markers. <laughs> Let me get started on changing this. First, I'm gonna just sketch out a backwards S and leave it there. Instead of fabric markers, I'm gonna be using this Angelus leather paint. I'm gonna crack open my paint palette with my custom mix colors in it, and I'm just gonna adjust them a little bit. Okay, now that I've gotten my colors ready, <gasps> Oh, sorry. I'm just struck by their beauty. I'm so proud of you guys. You're just so freaking gorgeous. I'm honestly scared. So I was just gonna go right in and start painting. Then I realized that these strawberries are gonna haunt me. Yep, you're gonna do that to me, aren't ya? First thing we gotta do is put an end to each one of their miserable, meaningless lives. It would look like I made some progress and then the paint would dry and they would come back. Go over it again, looks pretty good paint dries, and they're back. But eventually, I did get them dead. So now we can go on to the decorating. I'm going for a nice blendy look. I guess I was in a blendy mood. Can you be in a blendy mood? Probably should have taped off that zipper. Well, too late. I started with super pastel soft colors, but then for some reason I ended up switching it to more saturated colors. Oh, just my paintbrush shedding its skin. And here's more blending. I didn't really have a plan for where to put what color. I was just kind of figuring it out as I went. Just keeping in mind, you know, put each color next to a color that will blend nicely and not make brown. This is what I ended up with. It's pretty nice. And I'm busting out my circle maker. I'm adding one circle in the blendy area and one in the blank area. Are those evenly spaced? No, no. That's all right. Shh, maybe they won't notice. I'm going for a yin yang inspired kind of thing. The actual yin yang symbol, of course, represents balance and Chinese philosophy. I was in Taekwondo for like two years and they had this symbol all over the place at the school and my nine-year-old self just being like, wow, it's so beautiful. So for me, it's kind of like a nostalgic thing because I clearly remember being way too fascinated with it. But this version, I've swapped out the black and white for blendy, colorful, and purple. I just wanted to make it like personalized. Now I'm bringing <coughs> In the metallic gold paint. Might have overfilled that a little bit, buddy. Okay, and I'm just using that to outline since the edges of this seemed a little bit raw and I thought it needed a finishing touch. Just a little something something. Little, little flavor, little flair, little huzzah. Okay, and look at that. There's a whole other side to it. Boom painted it gold. Gotta love that. And after a few little touch-ups, gotta clean up that crack. <laughs> I do mean this crack, not your crack. Although, <laughs> okay, I'll stop now. So we've changed this from pathetic strawberries to this kind of funky yin yang. I think it's a huge improvement from what it was. The design is pretty simple, but it actually took a significant amount of time to do. But I'm really happy with how the colors look together. And yeah, okay, I forgot that I did this. This is my cord bite collection. These things are moderately creepy, but very useful for keeping cords from crimping. I'm just showing that I 
put them in the bag. Wow, amazing. Okay, moving on. So my final choice is gonna be the shoes. I'm hoping that you guys were hoping that I was going to do these because I saved them for last in hopes that I guessed your hopes correctly. I did recently do a shoe painting video. I actually bought these as backups just in case I messed up the first pair. I ended up using these to create the thumbnail and then <laughs> scrape the paint off. Waste police, don't come at me. I definitely don't wanna leave it like this. These are perfectly good for decorating still, so let's do it. First, I need to prep the shoes by taping up the soles. Also, these little elastic areas. Just wanna try to keep paint out of there as much as we can. Owie. Oh my gosh, I almost died. No, it didn't even bleed. That was a warning though. And the other shoe, boom, ready to paint. I'm gonna focus on the one who needs the most help first. Doing a couple coats of white over this big mess to try to cover it up. Now I'm mixing a nice blue color, kind of a medium blue, and then a lighter blue. Ooh, that looks cool. And this is that same leather paint, by the way. Going in for the dip. Whee! And here we go. I'm gonna be painting this entire shoe blue because it's inspired by one of my newest designs, this guy. I made this dinosaur in my latest squishy makeover. He's not too bright, he's a little awkward. I'm sketching him out along with his cheeseburger because yeah, he likes eating things, I guess. I did notice that the painted version of him is a little bit darker than he is in actuality, but that's fine. Okay, let's not worry about it. So in my dedicated shoe video, I actually spent multiple days on that one pair of shoes, but since I'm doing two other projects this week as well, I knew that I was gonna have to do something a little bit more simplistic for this pair of shoes. Look at these aesthetic close-up shots, aw. I'm keeping the style of this very cartoony, no shading, just kind of like a blocky look Look, but I actually really really like it. It looks so cute. Cousin Derp, you've never looked better my friend. I'm adding his little polka dots and then a big fat messy white outline which I ended up cleaning up later. I'll throw on some blue trim and for the outside of the shoe, oh I just stepped in paint. I'm adding those spots that he has on his belly. Alrighty, the other shoe, am I gonna paint this the same? No, because that would be boring. So I'm painting this one a light green because this is pickle shoe. Gracious, you just keep coming back. And since I gave Cousin Derp a cheeseburger, I thought it would look weird if Pickle didn't have like some sort of accessory. So I painted him in that unicorn pool float that I did because I did put him in there one time. I think he liked it. He didn't say otherwise. So yeah, both pairs of shoes I've done now have been based on past characters of mine. You know, sometimes I do think it would be cool if I was one of those people who had just a really sophisticated art style and, and people were just so impressed and said things like oh yes I find this art to be quite conceptually intriguing and blah I don't think that anyone says that about cousin derp do you <laughs> But you know what? That's just fine. Because this is just what I genuinely like to do. It's the kind of thing that just makes me happy and it's enjoyable for me. I think everyone's creativity kind of works in their own way. And for me, at the age of 25, I like painting things like rainbows and derpy looking dinosaurs. So that's just wonderful for me. Fortunately, I'm not the only one because I know some of you actually really appreciate this kind of vibe as well. Art is a personal thing thing and it's your creativity even if people think it's dumb or weird do it your way anyway so i'm just adding some final details to the pickle shoe and they are together again oh so cute sign them real quick and finally remove that tape oh it's like taking off a crusty band-aid it's just so relieving I did a couple little touch-ups here and there, and then added a gloss finish, finisher, finish, <laughs> which is very liquidy and tends to run a little wild, be careful of that. And voila, here are the final shoes. I'm very glad I was able to make something of these instead of just letting them be a waste. These just had so much life left in them and I'm very glad that I was able to salvage them and turn them into something actually that I like. I love the way the designs look. They're so bright and cheery and oh, they're just so cute. So that's everything I'm gonna redo today. There are quite a few things left 
I knew I wasn't going to fit all of them into one video, so if you guys like this, maybe I can come back and do this again at some point and redo a couple more. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye!